What's up everybody, D-Man back, welcome to a brand new video, and today we're going to be doing another figure review. This one, we will be reviewing Playmates Ghidorah 2019 from Godzilla King of the Monsters. <laughs> I'm excited about this one. Of the Playmates figures they've released, this is probably the most hype I've been for a figure, I think. I really like the MonsterVerse King Ghidorah. It's one of my favorite, well, it is my favorite Ghidorah design. One of my favorite Kaiju designs ever. I'm such a big fan of it, and I'm excited to see what Playmates does with it because I think Jax Pacific had a lot of room for improvement, and also, there's just not very many Ghidorah 2019s released. Of course, Haya is changing that, but that's down the line. Monster Arts, which is still back there, not part of the figure comparisons. It's too much of a hassle. So I'm excited to see what they've done with him to see if we get an improvement on the Ghidorah from Jack's Pacific, and that's what I'm looking forward to. Getting into it, first thing I want to say is that this shirt did not cause irreparable damage to the Godzilla community. Neither did the art. You guys are just babies. Absolute babies. No, <laughs> first thing I wanted to say is that I love the box art. I'm a really, really big fan of what they've done with the MonsterVerse packaging. I think it's gorgeous. I think it looks great. MonsterVerse branding on the side. I like the MonsterVerse logo. It's grown on me. The whole hourglass turned into the M. That's cool. The back of the box has Ghidorah and Godzilla and Kong and Mechagodzilla. And there's a Warbat thrown up in here in the corner. Actually, seeing the Warbats next to Ghidorah is pretty sweet. That'd be really interesting to see the two of them together on screen because they're both like snake-like monsters. They've chosen some great images of Ghidorah here for the sides of the packaging. I really like those pictures of Ghidorah. I miss the old Godzilla King of the Monsters logo. I think it looks beautiful. This has taken me right back to the old Jack's Pacific unboxings that we did. Those were so fun. I like the Ghidorah on the back of the box here. It's a good picture of the figure showing him off, showing what he can look like when he's all set up. I also like the blue. It's very cool. Showing the battle damage on the bottom is just all your like legal distributor information. Who cares? I'm just a big fan of it. I really, really like the MonsterVerse packaging. I miss the King of the Monsters era. I love the blue. Good stuff. Way better than their Godzilla vs. Kong packaging. The back of the box has a couple descriptions here. The first stating, The monsters of ancient myths and legends are real and battle for dominance across the world. Humanity's efforts to coexist with these titanic forces of nature is led by Monarch, a highly equipped organization of the bravest scientists, adventurers, and military specialists in the world. Now humanity enters a brave new era of discovery filled with unknown dangers. And then there's also a description for Ghidorah himself stating, Monarch classification monsters zero. It's cool that they worked that onto the box. A three-headed serpent known through myth as the one who is many. King Ghidorah emerges from a glacial tomb of ice in Antarctica as the world's greatest threat. The ancient winged destroyer travels the skies, cloaked within an unstoppable storm of supercell thunder, driven by a primal instinct to destroy all life on Earth as a living extinction machine. That's badass. That's a badass description of Ghidorah. Man, I just miss this movie. I miss King of the Monsters. I miss this Ghidorah. Let's get him out and talk about him. Okay. Are you a fellow knife boy like me? Well, if so, you're not gonna be getting this guy out of the packaging. I needed scissors. I needed a scissors. I needed, uh, I needed scissors. <laughs> and I'm so far mostly happy. So he comes out of the box, surprisingly, I wasn't expecting it, without his wings attached. What the f Flub. That's how he comes out of the box, is like this. Just his arms and his chest gaping open. Absolutely brutal looking. Poor guy is in a lot of pain here. <laughs> Ouch. This is the little battle damage piece that they gave, and it's got a decent texturing, kind of bumpy and ridgy. I'm sure it fits in his chest pretty well. Very soft plastic, which is always nice, like very rubbery. I like that they're malleable like that. The wings are pretty good. They're mostly identical, so I'm just gonna try and explain my thoughts using this one wing. I really like the way they start here. I like the kind of bat-like design here. I don't know what these things are called, these little bone things that kind of build the structure of the wing, but they've done a really good job with it. I also really like the arm and the way it stretches up here. I like the way that it branches out here and builds the rest of the wing out. I like the tips being all sharp and spiky. That's really neat. They've done a decent-ish job. As you can see, the wing has a lot of texturing throughout it. Like when I move, you can see the way that the light reflects off of it because there is a decent amount of 
of texturing on the wing. So I do like that aspect of it. They have done a pretty good job texturing the front of the wing. It doesn't look as muscular as like the previous Ghidorah figure releases do. So it doesn't look as intentional, but I like that there is texturing there and it's not flat. The back of the wing looks really cool with these veins running all through it. That's really gross, a really cool touch. I like that through the light, it's kind of giving off the impression that it's semi-transparent. You can see shadows moving through it. So I like that because it builds the idea that Ghidorah is a creature that exists and you know his wings in order to make him fly can't be that thick. So I like that stuff. I really like the vein texturing they've added in the back of the wings. That's a really good touch. Now, do you see these two little black dots right here? There are two little black dots. There's another little brown dot right here. And then there's like a teeny little speckle on the other wing. I wouldn't normally bring up something that insignificant because it's such a small detail to notice, but I wanted to bring up that quality control issue because actually I had the same quality control issue on the Jax Pacific Ghidorah back in 2019. Although the wings are identical, so they shouldn't have this, I do like the detail that there's this little chip in the wing on both wings. This wing is identical in terms of sculpt and design and everything. The only difference is that this one features the legal information printed on the side of the wing. I always hate when they put the legal information on the figures themselves, but at least they've tried to be subtle here. As for Ghidorah himself, the battle damage piece, it actually looks pretty neat. I like the red and pinkness of it, and I wish it carried over a little more because you can see that there's still gold in there and they didn't paint the full thing in properly, but it's a pretty good start, and I like the texturing of it. It looks very muscular. This actually looks like the most grotesque battle damage piece they've had. It looks great, but it does not blend seamlessly when you put the two pieces into each other, which is always a shame. Overall, I am very impressed with the sculpt on this figure. I think it looks fantastic. I think they have done a really, really good job bringing this thing to life. The tail itself looks great. I like the rattlesnake tip on the tail. I think they've done a really good job bringing that to life. It looks great. The tails do mirror each other. They are identical and they mirror each other, which is fine. Of course, I'm not requiring that they look different. I don't know if they look different in the movie. I like the way that the double layer of spine starts on both tails and leads up into the back. That does create the issue where if you don't line them up perfectly, it's going to look a little weird when they're a little off centered and it's always a shame when the designs don't line up quite that nice. I like the muscle texture in the back. It looks fantastic. Fantastic. They've done such a great job at it. The way that the spines lead into the muscle texture, not only does he have big broad shoulders to build out the muscles where his wings are, but I like the way that the muscles move up into his necks. That looks fantastic. This has a great sculpt. They've also done a great job bringing to life the scale pattern of Ghidorah and bleeding it over from the plastic into the tails. The front of the body, it does not hold up. The back of the necks look pretty good overall. Now, I do have a major critique here, and it's that Ghidorah in the movie does not have identical heads or necks. So seeing the fact that he has one row of spines on all three necks is disappointing as the right and the left head should have different lengths of neck spikes and the center head should have two rows of neck spikes. I can forgive them not doing the different lengths of neck spikes on the right and the left head, but the fact is they really, really should have had two layers of spikes leading up the back of Ghidorah's center head neck. One thing that I'm glad that they did not include on the back of these necks is Ghidorah's hair. Ghidorah in the Showa era features hair on his necks. It was actually featured in a lot of the concept art for Godzilla King of the Monsters, and if you don't remember, a lot of the Ghidorah figures that were produced from Bandai to Jack's Pacific still feature the hair on Ghidorah's neck, even though in the movie, Ghidorah does not have hair on his necks. It was a weird thing that they did. They clearly based the figure on the concept art and not the movie, and it was strange. So I'm glad that this figure does not have that issue. Let's see how well these wings go in. This went in very easily. Yeah, it went in super easily. This one was a little stranger, but it goes in fairly nicely and easily. And once they're in, they snap in, heard that, and they seem very sturdy. I mean, these these things are not going anywhere, but I mean, this is an articulation thing that I'll talk about. Unfortunately, there's no articulation with them. The front of the body does not look as good as the back. While I do like the feet, they look really nice, and I like the scales on the legs. The legs look more untextured than the rest of the body. The sides of the legs are cool. They feature these sharper, larger spikes sticking up. That's really nice. Ghidorah's underbelly looks pretty decent. It goes into his chest, which doesn't look that good. This is where we're getting into your standard, unrendered, playmade stuff. Then we get back into the sides of the chest with the nice scale pattern 
charming. Then you transition into the wings and it's not a clean transition at all. The wings look like they come from a completely different figure. They just lack the texture, they lack the depth, and they lack the care that the rest of the body has. They're also made of a different type of plastic. You go from, yes, a hard plastic, but clearly a different type of hard plastic into the very, very hard plastics of the wings. Going up through the necks here, the bottoms of the necks look pretty decent. I like that rigid texture and then the scales on the sides complement it very well. That's very Ghidorah. It looks great. And then the heads look fantastic overall. I got to give credit where credit is due. Playmates has done a lot of good stuff in the heads. Ghidorah has such small heads that it is hard to capture all of the details in them, but they've done a really good job with the white teeth, even though they're not individually sculpted. I wouldn't expect them to be. The pink tongues look fantastic. I like the way that the mouths are all in different poses with some of the tongues sticking up more than others. I like that the center head has the widest mouth. I like the glowing orange eyes. Of course, it would be nice if they added pupils and my Ghidorah's right head's left eye isn't painted very well at all. But the heads look great overall. I really like them. I think they look nice. I think they've got a lot of good details and I do appreciate and maybe I'm just reading into this, but it looks like the center head has a different crown than the other two like in the movie it's fairly pronounced you can't really tell from wide shots but when you get close-ups or you look at the CG model all three heads have different head crowns they've all got different spikes coming off their heads it looks like if I'm not mistaken the right and the left head appear to be the same sculpts but the center head I think has a bigger crown which he should he should have the biggest in the movie they haven't really done a great job capturing the likeness of the right and the left heads up apart from each other, but again, it's a kid's toy, so you wouldn't really expect them to put that much detail into it. Overall, I'm very impressed with the sculpt. Another thing I'm impressed with is the rubbery pieces. The rubbery legs I like. I really like the rubbery tails. It just means you can bend and wave them a lot. It also, the rubbery necks are nice because while they're not articulated, you can bend them a lot. Oh, I popped mine out. Let's see how easy it is to get back in vary. You can bend the necks a little bit, not as much as I would like. I would like if the necks were as malleable as these tail pieces are, where you can just wiggle and waggle that tail all day long. You can't do that with the necks as much, but they are malleable, so you can twist and turn them and make them look around. And the heads themselves are very soft. So you can pinch the jaws and make him scream and make the heads turn and look at each other. Like, I can turn this head out and then bend the neck and make him look around. And although it's not as easy as it is on this tail piece, I still can do it. That's what I really appreciate about it. I really appreciate these rubbery pieces because it gives that extra flexibility to Ghidorah. Now that does lead into the thing that I don't like about this figure and that is the articulation. Well, we start okay, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, nine, and 10. 10 points of articulation. And that sounds like, wow, for a Playmates figure, 10 points of articulation, that's a whole lot. Well, he's got three heads and three necks. Of course it's going to be a lot. But you can't articulate the wings even a little bit. And when I'm waving the wing, this thing comes out. You kind of wiggle this out of its position and it just pops back out. So now I got to put it back in. It, it's like in a, such a fixed, rigid, sharp position that it doesn't allow any sort of creativity with it. But also, it's going to make it so that he is going to always hog exactly this much shelf space, which isn't great and the wings don't even plug in perfectly like on the back here you can see that they don't even insert into each other in a way that's seamless you can still tell that they're being plugged in i mean they don't look great like they're not plugged in very well so the articulation takes a big hit i'll do some quick comparisons here this is just for fun but i wanted to see what Ghidorah 2019 looks like next to the microman Ghidorah. now these things are not going to look the same at all they're such different types of figures but it is fun to see two Ghidorahs next to each other the original king Ghidorah, and then the new one this is a pretty good accurate representation of that design this is an okay representation of its design but it is fun to see the two next to each other and it looks like the microman is bigger which he shouldn't be but it's fine it's not like they were making those in scale or anything that'd be weird i also wanted to get out the only king Ghidorah toy i owned for almost my whole life and that was my bandai king Ghidorah 2001 and now we've got the new king Ghidorah next to him bandai's always going to outshine playmates or jack's pacific because they've always got more detailing and more richness but you can see the two of them next to each other they don't look great <laughs> together the bandai one looks better speaking of bandai this is the bandai king Ghidorah 2019 and he is just massive compared to this Ghidorah. the actual playmate sculpt might be a little better 
better in terms of accuracy to the movie. The Bandai one just looks more impressive and has a bit better paint job, but sculpt wise, I actually will give this one to the Playmates King Ghidorah, except the Bandai one does have better wings and certainly looks way better on the back of the wings. I mean, the back of this Bandai one just looks incredible. The back of the Playmates one looks mostly good. There's the two of them together. <laughs> Getting our Ghidorah into a similar weight class here. Here he stands next to the Jack Pacific three inch scale King Ghidorah Destruction City. Actually, Jack Pacific three inch scale has about the same wingspan as the Playmates six inch scale. That's quite interesting, but here's the two of them together. I would give this one to the Playmates one. I think he looks better than the Jack Pacific one, but they are very similar. They're very similar figures, which leads us into the big one. And that is Jack Pacific Ghidorah 2019 versus Playmates Ghidorah 2019 six inch scales of each. I think there are benefits of each. Jack Pacific has better articulation, a better paint job and way better sculpts on the wings, but Playmates has a more accurate to the movie sculpt. I think the necks are a lot better on the Playmates one. I think the tails are a lot better on the Playmates one. And I think the body sculpt itself and the necks and the heads are way better on the Playmates one than they are on the Jax Pacific. So it's kind of a trade-off. Jax has better articulation. It's got a way more impressive, intimidating size. He does take up a lot of shelf room as a result of that, which is unfortunate. He takes up almost double the shelf room, it seems, as the Playmates King Ghidorah, but the Jax one doesn't have as movie accurate of a sculpt and the body itself isn't as nice. So Playmates, good job. I think that's ultimately, if they were on sale together at the same time for the same price, ultimately, I think it would come down to what do you value more articulation or accuracy in the sculpt. And I would probably pick the Playmates one, I think is the one I would pick out of the two because I think the Playmates one, while it lacks the articulation, makes up for it in terms of the sculpt. So if you're looking for a direct comparison, that might be what I would have done back in the day. Nowadays, certainly when I just put these figures on shelves, that's what I would have done anyways. Maybe back in the day I would have gone for articulation because that was more important to me back then. Now I just put them on shelves and that's it. So maybe I'd go with the Playmates one. Another downside to the Playmates one that you don't have with the Jack Pacific is that this thing feels like it's going to explode if you drop it. These wings feel like they are going to shatter. Like, watch out. Parents who buy this figure, watch out. You can't flex these wings. If your kid is going to be a kid who's going to try and flap the wings, first of all, they're going to pop off constantly because you're going to try and force them down and so the back hinge is going to just go. Also, don't, don't, because you can't flex the wing. It is such hard plastic that it is going to go and snap in half. Really, really bad design flaw. I would have loved if this was a soft vinyl plastic the way that everybody else does it, the way that Jax did it, the way that Bandai does it, the way that everybody who thinks does it. Don't know why they did this. This is really scary. I mean, it's a $20 figure, so if it breaks, it's 20 bucks down the drain, but it's also harder to find these days. I spent a lot more than $20 on this stupid guy. Like he should be $20, I should say. He should be a $20 figure, but I spent more than that because it's hard to find him. Finally, I wanna end it off with Ghidorah's old rival, Godzilla, the Playmates Godzilla 2019. This is just the regular version, but I liked it because it's the most King of the Monsters-esque version. And seeing the two of them next to each other, this is a fun mashup, man. I love a Godzilla versus Ghidorah fight, always a good time. These two scale well next to each other. Ghidorah should be much bigger, but in terms of toys, I don't expect the scaling to be accurate. I think these look good together. They're fun. I think this would be a really fun fight for a kid to play with. I'm glad that now a six inch Ghidorah can go with a six inch Godzilla. That's something that's important is always getting them in the same general ballpark because that's what's always fun to play with as a kid. So I'm glad that Ghidorah exists, instantly justifies his existence on the premise of Godzilla versus Ghidorah from Playmates alone. All right, so Playmates Ghidorah 2019, I'll just give a quick recap here. I think the body sculpt is great. I really am a big fan of the back of it. <laughs> I really like the rubber pieces that they've given him but the wings themselves are the big downfall. They look bad when they're attached to him. They look bad from the back. They don't plug in quite right. They just don't hold up compared to the rest of the figure. Even though on their own, they're okay. They just don't hold up when you put them in the figure. And also the battle damage piece is one of the most aggressively poorly fitting battle damage pieces they've done. It looks bad. So there are ups and downs to this. The articulation is pretty decent as far as Playmates goes, except when you get to the wings, they are so stiff. They don't move at all. There's no flexibility. They feel fragile. I I think there's a lot working for the figure and a lot working against it and I would probably level it out at about a 7 out of 10. I think that there is a lot of good stuff here. One thing that is great about it is that he stands up. 
he stands on his own. The tails are in a way so where he can just stand. The Jack specific releases of Ghidorah from 2019, those ones don't stand on a shelf well. Like they're so wing heavy because the wingspan is so large. This one is a smaller wingspan with actually a more interesting design, the way that they're kind of flexing inward, I think is cool rather than just having them be completely flat and straight out. But it does result in him taking up less shelf room and being able to stand on his own two feet the way that those ones are always falling over because they're so back heavy. I mean, this little King Ghidorah, the three inch Jack specific King Ghidorah cannot stand to save its life. You have to have it leaned on something else. It cannot stand. All right, that'll do it for this one, guys. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you all for supporting the Patreon. It really goes a long way towards supporting the channel and making sure I can keep making videos like this for you guys. I really appreciate it. Through the Patreon, you can get early access to content, access to the Discord community and more. And I'll also, um, the Kevin meme is still a good time if you can have a good time with it. <laughs> thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man out.